one of three short films um, that for enjoyment are putting together as part of the amazing Nithroid Festival and we are down just slightly outside Kingham Quay and we're focusing in and around the Kingham Quay area what we thought would be nice to do is we're going to do a wee art drawing tutorial as a short film I thought it'd be good to put together a little bit of a natural history video and a little bit of a history video of the actual key itself the old port of Dumfries so covering flora and fauna the fauna will have scarpered because it will have heard me talking but very rich area for deer, otter um, and a lot of uh, birds that come up and migrate up into the into the area in the summer with the swallows and the warblers and all that kind of thing um, but more so in the winter when we get the huge influxes of the geese, the barnacle geese, the pink-footed geese um, coming down in a very very fertile and rich area for them with the grazing on the fields especially in and around this area actually next to the net so as we're not going to really see much of the animal life I thought it'd be good to focus in uh, maybe for 10 minutes on just some of the just some of the plants that we can see in the trees we've got starting off here right next to a really amazing crab apple which I think could be quite an old tree by the looks of things it's been there for quite a long time I've just tried one of the apples very very bitter make good jam though. So we've got all sorts of things along the path here. We've got a really interesting one there called ribwort plantain and when this has gone to seed this stem actually grows quite big and the seeds can be collected and made into a biscuit which used to be um, a really big source of protein for people. Um, back in the day it was quite a common plant as well. and see what we can find. It's just coming to the end of their flowering season now, so there are goodies waiting for the birds when they get here. The field fairs and the red wings which come down from Scandinavia, or berries, ready for them to eat. Another blackbird will take some of those as well, and if you're lucky enough, you might get wax wings. They'll come and eat them as well. gone over so they're a little bit harder to identify but we have got purple loose drive here there we go. I see it poking through there so that's a really good plant for long tongued insects like brimstone butterflies uh, elephant hawk moths red-tailed bumblebees and the caterpillars of the engrail moth and geometer moth I really like the plant as well and it was quite uh, commonly used as an astringent and a medicinal herb and was very good apparently for dysentery and diarrhea a really lovely plant not so favoured in New Zealand and North America where it's turned into their version of Himalayan balsam so they have a real problem with, uh, with the purple loose drive there, trying to control it because it hasn't really got any natural predators. In the UK it's got a couple of weevils that like to eat away at the roots to keep it in check. And it is outcompeted by quite a few other plants. So we've got another one here, which is called Meadowsweet. Um, flowers do actually get a bit bigger than that when they grow. Meadow wort, Queen of the Meadow, it was called as well. Philopendula ulmaria, um, very commonly used in weddings back in the old days. It used to be strewn on the floor, also used as bridal garlands. And the ulmus in the name ulmaria comes because the leaves are fairly similar to elm. It's 
actually quite strong in Sally silic acid. It's the old world painkiller that was turned into um, aspirin, basically. Um, and the flowers were used to flavour beers and uh, various different other things. I think it's because it's quite um, quite a sterile plant. So I think they used to put it in the beer to actually stop the beer going off. So another very commonly used plant that you can just quite easily walk by while you on your wee trail. Some more hawthorn. Roseps here. Absolutely stunning in the light. What else can we find? We've got yarrow here. A really nice plant. And that was used time immemorial on battlefields. So the leaves, which are a little bit fern like. So they were used in dressings to soak up blood and to keep the wounds quite clear. A knapweed there. Just a single one on its own. And you can literally walk five steps and there's a different plant as you as you're moving along. It's absolutely fantastic down here. So we've got one here called Tansy. A really lovely looking plant, golden buttons. Smells a little bit of camphor oil and can be quite toxic. Apparently, if you eat three plants, it could kill you, but I think you'd have to be in pretty desperate states to sit on the side of the nest chewing away at the chewing away at the wildflowers. Really, really effective old treatment for worms, which obviously used to be really a com really a common thing. Um, and makes really good insect repellent. Very commonly used back in the day as something to keep insects at bay, ants. So an internally and an external uses for the plants. And I suppose like all modern medicines in the right doses, you know, most people are fine, but some people are allergic to it. It's quite a toxic plant an absolutely magic one here called Crane's Bill. If I can get it to focus. It's geranium family. So a lot of those really common plants that you get in gardens. This is kind of the, the UK relation that's been hanging around here since the last ice age and it's called Crane's Bill because we stalks I'm still enough Interesting. First appears Rubus fruticosus, rose family, and great for butterflies. Lots of different butterflies and caterpillars use the, the plant. And the fibres alongside nettles used to be used pre string days as twine. So the fibres, and if you've ever tried to pull a bramble out, you know how strong the stems are as well fruit really really high in vitamin C and it doesn't need to be fertilized it's not a plant that needs to be fertilized um, it's a process called apoxomixis um, so the species can remain really really localized and that's why we've ended up in the UK with I think the last count was about 330 340 different types of blackberry so combined as you travel around parts of the country and pick them. They will have different flavours, they'll be different heights, the fruit will be different sizes. You can get types that are on sand dunes that um, are very, very low. 
uh, growing with quite small fruit. So, there's a lot to see and a lot to learn as you there, widely used, obviously the bow for the twine, used to be used in food, I think nettle soup can be a bit hit and miss depending on who makes it. basically right the way through the year down here things coming into flower nice fine trees there just kind of hiding away the light is absolutely incredible down here has a scent. It smells a little bit like Bahama Violets. So, could literally spend hours and hours exploring and walking down here. Just a wee wee insight into the flora and fauna that you can find. I'm just going to stop and have found one more. or a field vetch. It actually looks a little bit like bird's foot trefoil. So, hope you found it of interest. Get down with your sketchbook or your camera and see what you can find. And uh, scour the internet or some of your ID books when you get home and see what species you can discover while you're down here. Absolutely incredible view.